been a while since you guys have seen this RX PX325 on the channel and we need to get this thing running. In about a week and a half, I had my first mud bug ride of the year. It's supposed to be a really big event. We're gonna have sanctioned racing, group rides, vendors, food, all kind of good stuff. And this needs to be running for that. And we've got a long way to go in just a week and a half. There is nothing in this hull. Still got the rear exhaust in the hull. We've got the intercooler mount and the wire harness. But other than that, we've got a bare hull. So we have a lot of work to do in very little time. The main reason for that being is we've got a brand new engine built for this. And I wanted to try something new here. So this is my 325 block. And here you can see we have iron sleeves. So from the factory, this motor comes with what c calls a plasma coated cylinder, which is bare aluminum that has been coated. And it's not that great. If you damage the coating, it's done for. It's not like you can bore it out. This iron sleeve, if for whatever reason this does get damaged, we can continue to bore this out and put a new piston in it. Now, these pistons are CP pistons from my store, but it's not the standard piston that you would buy from us. It's an off-the-shelf piston that we sell that I then sent off to be coated to try something different on this motor. This piston with the coating is much tighter in the bore. There's no piston rock and it's designed to self-clearance itself basically. It's supposed to go in really tight and it's going to clearance itself and the end result is going to be a much tighter fitting piston which is going to result in better oil retention between the skirt and the cylinder wall and a better ring seal so in the end we are going to make more horsepower with this than we would with a traditional bare sleeve piston with a much larger piston wall clearance on this engine i'm just coming over here for example this is a customer ski that did blow up you can see the damaged piston there we're going to get to this in another video but you can see this piston rocks back and forth a good bit so that's how your pistons typically are when you're building a motor, but that coating allows us to go much tighter. And we're gonna try it out. If it works, I'm gonna do it on every single engine that I do build. Aside from the pistons, we are still using the stock rods, but we've got all ARP hardware. So ARP head studs, you went to ARP rod bolts, which are much stronger than the factory rod bolts. ARP main studs, we're going to put ARP cam bolts and ARP flywheel bolts. All of this I keep in stock. I'll have links in the description so you can go order that stuff. Stock rods are fine at the power level that we're aiming for right now, but the ARP rod bolt is just an extra insurance. I know those rod bolts aren't going to fail like the stock rod bolts possibly could. Here are some ARP rod bolts just so you can see. And then here are the factory rod bolts, which are stretch bolts. It's a one-time use. After you pull them out, you gotta throw them away. These are reusable and they are stronger. So these are definitely worthy of doing if you were to ever take this motor apart. All we have left to do is the cylinder head and put the cam in and do the timing for that. So factory ported cylinder head, it has been resurfaced. Stock valves, but we do have Kyla springs and retainers installed. Other than that, this is a bone stock head and we are going with a Kyla cam. We're gonna get right to installing this and getting the motor back in the ski. The head's on and torqued down, the cam is installed and torqued down, and if you were paying attention to that, there's a torque sequence for this. I tell people it's like laying down a sheet of paper. If you start on the outside working in, it's going to lift the center and warp the head when you torque it, so you've got to start in the center and work your way out. So I do this one, this one, this one, this one, that one, that one, that one, that one. And it lays down nice and flat, that's the sequence c -Doo calls for, and that's the way it's supposed to be done. Now the cam. You can see we have it timed 
and the timing marks are leaning a little bit to the exhaust side. You see that one's lower than this one. That is perfectly normal. What matters is we have the cam locked and the crank is locked, so the cam timing is right. Now when torquing down the camshaft bolts themselves, I leave them a little loose. That way this has a little play in the chain. And then I'll put the timing chain tensioner in and that'll bring this over. And then I torque this down because if you torque this down beforehand and it's clocked a little bit to the left and then you put the timing chain tensioner in, it's going to put more tension on this chain and stretch the chain and risk breaking it. So always let the pressure out of the tensioner install the tensioner then torque down these bolts now we are good to put the rocker shaft on torque that down and then we'll be able to put this motor into the ski the rockers are on and they are torqued down these rocker shaft bolts are oem stretch bolts so they are one time use and it's torque to yield so you'll do these in three passes you'll do the first pass at seven foot pounds the second pass at 14 foot pounds and the final pass an additional 90 degrees so you need a torque wrench that can measure an angle but if you don't have that being that this is 90 degrees it's a right angle it's kind of hard to mess that up so start here and then torque it 90 degrees to there that would be if you don't have the proper torque wrench to do it these also have a torque sequence so same thing with the cylinder head start on the inside and work your way out. So you'll do these two, then these two, and then the two outside, and you'll do that on each pass. Everything is torqued down. We're good to put the valve cover on and this back in the ski. But before we do that, we're going to pull the, the crankshaft locking tool out, and we're going to spin this motor over by hand a few times to make sure that we have no interference anywhere. And that's a way to double check your cam timing to make sure it's right. If you have these tools installed correctly, you're not going to mess up the cam timing. But if you're 180 degrees out and you think you have this installed right, but you don't, the valves will come in contact with the piston. So we're going to spin this over by hand just to be damn sure that the cam timing is correct. This is installed right. I know it's installed right. So I know the cam timing is correct, but it never hurts to double check anything, especially on an expensive build like this. Everything spun over just as it should. Now, one thing I did mention is I do that with the spark plugs out, because if you do it with the spark plugs in, the motor's gonna build some compression, but now we're going to put a fresh set of plugs in, and then we put the valve cover on. Installing the valve cover, I see people strip out these bolts quite often. That's because the way these are designed, you can see these have these little thread stoppers there. So these will thread in and they will physically stop and people think they're just getting tight. They go to tighten them some more and it's going against the stop. You physically can't tighten it anymore and it just strips out the thread on the cylinder head. So when you're putting your valve cover on, keep in mind that there is a stop on here and don't try to turn it past the stop. Well, this engine is completely ready to be dropped into the ski now and i did put the exhaust manifold on to drop it in will it make it much tighter getting the motor in yes but it's not going to be as tight as trying to get this on while it's in the ski because as you can see here i've got the reva racing exhaust manifold spacer for two reasons one being you're going to get some increased performance out of this this spaces the manifold out and makes a little bit longer of an exhaust runner. So you're improving the flow of this cast manifold. Is it going to be as good as like a header setup? No, but it is better than running this directly onto the cylinder head. And two, I've got these EGT sensors that I'm monitoring through my fuel tech. So that's more data for me. I get to see the exhaust gas temperature from each cylinder while it's running and it helps while I'm tuning. Now, one other thing that we're going to point out is I do have the crank still locked and I'll show you why once we get this in the ski and go to put the carbon seal in because on the 325s they did update the carbon seal and it's a little bit different than the years prior so we're going to check that out here in a little bit. Now we've got the motor in the hull and I got the engine aligned and the carbon seal installed and so this is what I was talking about. So we now have a threaded nut on the drive shaft instead of a C-clip holding the carbon seal on. It's a more reliable design, 
but you do have to tighten this down. And that's why I left the crank locking tool so there's no risk of spinning the drive shaft when you're trying to tighten it. It doesn't have to be that tight. You'll feel it when it stops and you'll put down these little locking tabs to keep this from backing off. But this is just a little extra reinsurance to make sure the motor doesn't want to spin over. So now we'll go ahead and take this out, put the plug back in it, and start getting the rest of this thing buttoned up. I've got this plate installed on it here. We are going to open loop cooling, so I need to run all of that as well as put the fizzle intercooler in. I'll start making some progress on that and then we'll come back for another update. Well, I got a little carried away and now the entire ski is done and ready to hit the water. So you can see back here, I did put the fizzle intercooler in it. This is definitely needed with the fizzle supercharger. We're making more boost, a lot of heat. So definitely want the intercooler. Now the intake manifold, this is something I did a while back. This is a direct port methanol injection system. So this would come on at wide open throttle and spray methanol into each intake runner. The uh, purpose of that would be to lower intake air temps and increase the octane of the fuel. But that's not really what I'm showing you. I did put this intake manifold girdle here. This is going to clamp the manifold at the seam and prevent it from splitting under high boost pressure. And we also did the Reva Racing intake manifold upgrade kit. This is 100% necessary. So what you're doing is deleting a flame arrester that's in the manifold and helping increase airflow. This is what I actually pulled out of the manifold. For those of you that have not seen it before, this is very restrictive, don't want that. So doing the intake manifold upgrade kit is definitely necessary. And the last thing that we did up here is we installed this plate from Reva Racing to delete the air box. So we've got way more room up in the front but I modified it so I could mount all my fuel tech stuff on it as well. So you can see I got my EGT4 mounted here, the igniter, the fuel tech harness is mounted underneath the EGT4 and it holds all the factory electronics as well. So that definitely cleaned this up a lot. That's much better than having the big bulky air box in there. And now we're ready to go to the water. I am switching to running E85 on this engine instead of 93 octane pump gas. So I just have a base tune in it right now. We need to head to the water and actually start tuning it and breaking this engine in. The next video, we're gonna take this thing to the water, start breaking the motor in and getting the tune dialed in. If you saw anything that you like on this build that you wanna to do to your own ski, be sure to go to greenhawk.net to buy those parts and I'll have some links in the description below. So thanks for watching. I'll catch y'all in the next video.